What's up everybody, Eric here with another EWE Reviews. Today I'll be talking about the movie Totally Killer. Before we get into that, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, let me know what you want me to review next. But yeah, this is the spoiler-free review for Totally Killer. This is the new Amazon Prime uh, movie. Um, is just, um, ah, let me get into this. So title again, Totally Killer. The film genre is an American black comedy slasher film uh, with the rating of R. Uh, this was released on October 6, 2023, with an estimated budget of $34 million. Uh, there's no box, this just came out for streaming, so there's no box office numbers that I have for this. Uh, director for this film is Nanachika Khan. The casting here includes Kieran Shipka, Olivia Holt, Julie Bowen, Troy L. Johnson, uh, Kelsey Moinma, and Jonathan Potts and has a runtime of 106 minutes, and I watched this on Amazon Prime on my TV, and it does not have a post credit scene. Now, let's talk a little bit about the plot. When the infamous 16, uh, Sweet 16 Killer returns 35 years after his first murder, murder spree to claim another victim, 17-year-old Jamie accidentally travels back in time to 1987, determined to stop the killer before he can start. That's the basic plot. It is very similar to Happy Death Day and Back to the Future if they were to have a baby. So let's go into my thoughts for the film now. So let's start with the bad. It's not really that original. Like I just said, it's the brainchild of Back to the Future and Happy Death Day into one. Um, some things were a little bit too easy to predict just because of how they're doing things um, and how the person figured out time. Like, it's not the fact that someone figured out time travel. It's the way that it's done that's a little bit too hand wavy for me. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. It is what it is. This is this. I mean, this is the definition of like a straight to DVD release, right? Even though it's like on streaming, you can tell like the budget's not as high. 38 million is not a high budget for a film. Um, and then I'm not the biggest fan of the teenage drama in it, but like it needs it. So it's like one of those things where like, okay, I don't necessarily like this. But for like the old slasher type films, like, okay, it makes sense. Like, oh yeah, this person's hooking up with that person. Oh, they broke up. It's like, it's a bunch of teenage drama. And I'm like, ah. But it works in the film. I'm just not the biggest fan of it. So let's now move on to the good. I had a lot of fun with this movie, guys. This is one of those movies I say is a lot of fun just because the setting, it's the 80s. Things can be done there in a way that you can't necessarily do in other films. And... Was just the idea of like a cell phone like this is just me out of context saying think about the show friends some people love it imagine putting cell phones in friends that kind of ruined the entire show um all right so it's the idea of like oh yeah you're going to a time period where this stuff actually could be a lot of fun there's things that if you do this in nowadays it'd be like oh that doesn't make sense because of the technology we have now but you go back to the 80s and it works pretty cool over there <laughs> there's a lot of funny things about like even using the 80s settings of where our main character, Jamie, uh, she, she's the one in the 80s and she's just like, oh, okay, ah, okay, and stuff like that. And it's like, she gets away with stuff where she's like, was it really this easy back in the 80s to do this stuff? And it's like, yes, it was. It was very different time period than it is now. Uh, people cared way less about security back then compared to now. I mean, even just then, think about how 9-11 changed airports. Very different back then to now. All right, and I also had fun trying to figure out who the killer was. Now, what I will say is what I was trying to figure out the most was what was the motive for the original killer? And it was just like, I couldn't figure it out. And the movie did enough, like, they're giving you uh, hints here and there, but it's like, they never gave you the full context. And once you do get the full context, you're like, oh, that makes way more sense, you know? And even then I'm like, huh, okay, do I really feel bad for these people? I don't know. Like, it is really cool. I liked how they did it, in my opinion. It was really done well. And I liked the rules of the time travel. So. I know this is a spoiler-free review, but this is just talking about how they use the time travel. It's like, think about it that you're in a river, you go um, back to the top of the river, you start there, but let's say you go uh, where you get back to where you were at, it's like, oh, things might change. And even though like you're thinking of like, oh, in the Marty McFly one, it's like, oh, he accidentally could get himself written out of time because of his actions. Like, no, 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 here you can exist outside of time and you can go back to where you were. You just There's nothing for you to go back to, but you go back there. Uh, so I really like the way that the time travel rules work here. And I like that the sl even though it's a slasher film, the number of kills are very limited. I want to say you can count them with your two hands. 
And it's like, you know, for a time travel film and a slasher film, it's like, that's not too bad. Like, if you guys re actually remember the old um, Halloween film, I think it only has like four deaths. It's not even that many. So it's like when you were able to do something like that, it's like you're a slasher, but you don't have to go on a crazy killing spring like Halloween Kills, where that movie had like 30 something people die. And it's like, okay, that's a bit too excessive. When you keep the number down, it's like, you know what? This actually does work. Um, and I laughed a lot with the ending. The ending to me is just like, it was worth the whole thing. It's like, um, if you watch Hot, Hot Tub Time Machine, it's like, oh, he ended up changing the future. And then you see how this all affected the future. I really loved it. And it's like a cool moment where you're like, oh, things are different. I kind of want to see if they do make a sequel for this. I don't think it means it, but I really like the cast. I, I would actually enjoy seeing them making a sequel, talking about this happening to someone else. And we get another like, uh, scenario similar to this, maybe not the same actors, but I'd actually like seeing something like that. So let's actually move on to my score, guys. And like I said, I really enjoyed this movie, but the fact that it's not original does affect the score where I'm like, oh, cool, but do I like this as much as something like Happy Death Day? And the answer is no. Happy Death Day to me was something very cool. And I would actually say if I were to go back and review Happy Death Day, I'd probably give that a nine out of 10. But I think that the time, the way they did time travel, I think was better than this. So I'm actually going to give this a 7 out of 10 for good. Still a good score. And it's also like the budget affects it. So I definitely recommend people go watch this. It's on Amazon Prime. It's like a lot of you have Amazon Prime and you kind of forget that you have the video option. Just go watch it. It's fun to watch. It was a good movie. Uh, I definitely recommend people go watch this. So my next review, I don't necessarily know what it's going to be. I know there's that new, like, Leonardo DiCaprio film that comes out this weekend, but that's like three and a half hours long. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna have something else reviewed before then. I'm gonna do a series review separate from that. Don't worry, that's still happening. But for movies, I don't know next which is gonna be my next review. So watch out for that. Uh, but I'll ha I'm hoping to have something up by next week. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.